The spike protein is capable of causing widespread damage to the heart and cardiovascular system. If your body has been instructed to make this protein, then it's potentially a big problem. Therefore, finding a way to help deal with this is of the utmost importance. The question is, what can you actually do about this? And that's going to be the topic of today's video. First of all, this one is for all of the people who had the virus and still experience symptoms which continue to persist to this day. Likewise, it's also for those of you who were coerced into getting a safe and effective medical procedure, but are now dealing with the consequences. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some solutions that you can try. So by now, there are multiple studies which have found that people with the post-viral syndrome experience thickness of the blood and widespread blood clotting. It's now known that these tiny microclots which form in the blood vessels all throughout the body are caused by the spike protein. Ultimately, what spike does is alters the composition of the blood and triggers widespread vascular inflammation. Now, if the body can't break down these clots through a process called fibrinolysis, then the cells can't get enough oxygen. You see, oxygen transfer becomes impaired and cells become hypoxic. If cells don't have enough oxygen, they lose the ability to make energy and eventually die. And for those of you who are wondering, this is the same spike protein which the body makes after receiving a certain medical procedure. For those of you who've had this, it's unknown whether um, the body will make it for months, years, or perhaps indefinitely. No one really knows. What we do know is that widespread blood clotting and a lack of cellular oxygen can potentially help to explain most, if not all, of the symptoms which are associated with this medical procedure, along with the post-viral syndrome. It might make you feel breathless because your body detects low oxygen. In the brain, it might trigger brain fog, dizziness, or autonomic nervous system problems. In the muscles, it might cause fatigue or pain. Put simply, all of this can be explained by a lack of cellular oxygen and an impairment of energy metabolism. In my opinion, you've got a couple of aims. One is to reduce the likelihood of blood clotting and improving circulation. Secondly, reducing vascular inflammation. And thirdly, improving oxygen uptake into cells and improving energy metabolism. As proof of concept, it just so happens that there is evidence showing anticoagulant triple therapy can be effective at resolving the persistent symptoms associated with people with the post-viral syndrome. And it turns out there are a few natural solutions which might be able to achieve this effect. As a priority, I think you want to try and degrade or get rid of spike protein as quickly as possible. The main reason for this is, is because it is the initial trigger that's causing all of the downstream problems. As I describe in this video, there are enzymes such as bromelain and natokinase which were shown to deactivate spike protein in vitro. This might be applicable in real life, um, and it might also apply to serapeptase. Anecdotally, there are many people who report benefit from this, so it's definitely worth a try. Secondly, you want to do what you can to improve blood circulation and vascular function. So two things that you might be able to do for this. First is a combination of an amino acid called arginine and vitamin C. When used in combination, they can be very effective at increasing the levels of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is the body's main vasodilator, and this is thought to be the mechanism of action. They also have many other positive benefits. In fact, there have been many studies looking at the effect of arginine on the viral infection and also post-viral syndrome. Additionally, you might want to consider using a medicinal herb called ginkgo biloba. This is long been known to improve circulation, particularly blood flow to the brain, and is therefore thought to be very useful where there is problems with getting enough blood around the body. Not only has this herb been used for the infection itself, but it's also been shown to resolve the cognitive deficits associated with the post-viral syndrome. The recommended dose is listed here, and when used in conjunction with arginine and vitamin C, it could prove to be very useful. That said, anything else which improves vascular function and circulation could also come in handy. First thing that comes to mind is far infrared sauna. Finally, another priority should be to improve cellular uptake of oxygen and cellular utilization of oxygen. For this, there are two B vitamins which could really come in handy. The first is niacin, also known as vitamin B3. Now, over the past three years or so, niacin has gained a lot of research attention in this field, primarily because it was shown that the virus 
could deplete active forms of niacin inside the cell. Of course, niacin has also been used to improve blood flow and prevent thrombosis, blood clotting, um, in numerous studies. And for this purpose, it's an excellent addition to any protocol. Ultimately, any form will do, although I would probably recommend a combination of the flush version of niacin, maybe at this dose, and an active form of niacin, such as nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide, and you could try it around this dose. Finally, we get to my favorite, which is vitamin B1, also known as thiamine. So what does this do? It's involved in how cells are generating energy. It's involved in how cells are uptaking oxygen, and it can improve oxygen utilization. Like niacin, this B vitamin has also received quite a lot of attention over the past three years. It's been used in critical illness ICU patients suffering from the virus, and also to prevent thrombosis. It plays lots of useful roles, and I think it's highly overlooked and under-acknowledged. Anecdotally, there are many in the post-viral syndrome community who have found much benefit from taking this B vitamin, uh, particularly when it comes to the neurological type symptoms, breathlessness, and fatigue. The recommended form to use is one which gets into the brain, so this would be either TTFD, which you can find here, or alternatively, benfotiamine. So to round up, if this stuff applies to you, the main goal should be to try to degrade spike protein, try to improve blood circulation and vascular function, and try your best to improve oxygen utilization and uptake by the cell. The way that you would do this is by looking at systemic enzyme therapy, uh, proteolytic enzymes, which I detail in this video, Alternatively, uh, looking at improving blood circulation through a combination of ginkgo, arginine, and vitamin C, and also then looking at how improving how cells uh, take up oxygen and use oxygen, that would be your niacin and thiamine. Of course, other nutrients can also come in handy, but these would be the primary priority, and these would make up the, the, the bulk of the protocol that I would personally be recommending for this problem. So if you liked it or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, and if that's everything, see you next time.